Hello and welcome to another This Week in Anthem. It's been another very busy week in the world of Anthem, as a result I'll be making a lot more smaller updates, rather than roll everything into one never-ending episode each Monday. So I'll highlight all the major points from the week, then jump in some of the best questions we've had answered from the AMA. First up, this week saw the return of Bioware's Anthem livestreams, the first of 2019. Ben Irving and Emily Taylor walked us through one of the endgame activities, Legendary Contracts, with a full squad of max level javelins, showing the full three part mission from start to finish, revealing several new missions, a long fight with lesser Ash Titans, and the loot Ben Irving earned from the mission. Worth a watch if you want a better idea of the type of gameplay you can expect as you start the endgame. For a full breakdown on everything we learned in that livestream, you can check out my other Anthem update all about it. Though one of the key takeaways that I didn't cover is on the way in which Ben was playing. This was the first time anyone has shown gameplay using keyboard and mouse. From the gameplay we saw, it seemed to work just fine though. When he ran through his settings, he did point out that his sensitivity for him has been turned way down, using 12% on 800 DPI mouse. So before you jump into the game, either for the demo or release, make sure you adjust these as soon as you can, so you don't fly into walls when turning unexpectedly sharp. In addition to seeing the controls, we got to see how weather affects the javelins. This isn't just for show, like in many other games. Rain will actually cool your javelin, allowing it to stay in the air longer, though it does come with an additional risk. While flying, lightning storms will strike the ground. These can hit you, instantly plummeting the javelin to the ground. Along with the livestream came an all-new in-depth trailer for Anthem, with John Warner walking through the key aspects of Anthem, the story, customization, and loadouts. This is only the first of its kind, so we can expect much more covering the endgame and other parts of Anthem in the following weeks. Even though this acts as an introduction to Anthem, we learnt a lot in terms of the story, including a new yet unnamed leader of the Dominion, who we get to see take control of the Anthem of Creation. Again, I've already covered this in detail, so if you're interested in learning more about the Anthem story, along with some speculation, I'll link my breakdown below. We're only a few days away from the VIP demo, and we're still getting additional information. First of all, there is actually an additional way to access the demo. If you're waiting to try Anthem before buying it, which most people probably should be, well now, anyone with access to the VIP demo can invite up to three others to play with them. They will get access to the exact same content, including rewards for taking part, allowing a full squad of friends to play together on the back of one pre-order. You'll be able to access your codes by logging into the EA website and by signing in with your account. If you've ordered a physical copy, then don't worry, you can still get access to these additional codes. All you need is your VIP code. Log in just as above and redeem your code. Doing so will open the additional three codes that you can send to friends. This is all part of Bioware's attempt to do things the right way for the customer, as they want everyone to have a chance to play the demo before they buy. So if you miss out on the VIP demo, the open demo will be running the following weekend. That wasn't the only news we got for the demo though. We've had several more in terms of the content you'll be playing. Mark Dara broke down a long list of what to expect from the beta on Twitter, including that there will be no tutorial, likely to avoid spoilers for the full game, instead you'll be dropped into a game about halfway through the story, and have access to a short story arc to play through. This begins at level 10 and you'll have the ability to level all the way up to 15, picking up to two javelins on the way. Unfortunately, you won't have access to pick your own pilot as this takes place as part of the tutorial process. You will, however, have access to test out all the core systems, missions, free play, the vault, and both sides of the forge. You'll be able to equip different builds and weapons for your chosen javelin, and even access to many of the customization features. John Warner went on to confirm earlier in the week that we'll be able to see exactly how the system works, including coin. Not all parts of the demo will be representative of the final game, however, as the build we'll be playing is six weeks old meaning we might get to experience some bugs that have now been resolved, in addition to names of items and other parts being changed slightly for clarity in the released version. To ease us into the gameplay, they also adjusted both the difficulty and economy of what we'll have access to, making it easier to gain levels and items, and also access to more cosmetics than you'll likely have at this stage of the full game. This also means we'll have a slightly older version of the PC controls, though they have said they handle much smoother in the current build something we actually got to see in the recent livestream. With those larger updates out of the way, we still have a couple more to go. Most of these come from the regular news source, Twitter, but this one is from Reddit. 
Bio Chris replied to several comments on the cosmetic system for Anthem, doubling down on things we already knew, but it's clear many still aren't fully aware of the microtransaction plans for Anthem. First off, there are no loot boxes, which I feel I need to mention anytime microtransactions come up. So let's run through what we got clarified. There will be cosmetics that can't be bought with microtransactions because they have to be earned in game. The only cosmetics that can only be bought are the Legion of Dawn special edition armor sets. Everything else added to Anthem can 100% be earned in game, as you'll be able to use the in game currency coin to purchase them. This isn't a premium currency, but the regular one you get to use with all vendors. How fast we get to earn it though is yet to be seen. We had a question related to the status effect system, specifically if the Javelin will be able to freeze one of the Ash Titans. According to Ben, no, not anytime soon. Not to say that it can't be done, but don't expect to rely on CCing an Ash Titan into submission. We've got a nice little update in terms of objectives. You may have noticed from all the live streams we've had that when someone picks up an objective item, there is no UI element confirming that you have it or anyone else has one. Instead, you can physically see it on your character model. This will easily get a bit confusing if you've match made into a group and don't have comms. So Ben agrees, adding that UI feature will be a good quality of life change they might look into add. Just like they recently did with the squad UI in general. One aspect of loot we know essentially nothing about are the consumables of Anthem. There has been some speculation on it, but we finally have some answers. It's now been confirmed that you'll be able to use your crafting mats to make them while at your forge. Just like other crafting. They will provide buffs to your javelins that last an entire mission. Persisting through death, that can also be used in free play. We haven't got a list of what these buffs will be, but we should find out soon enough. And finally, we're on to the last question for today. Do Bioware intend on keeping up with weekly live streams on Anthem? The answer is yes. Well, yes to more live streams, but no to weekly. Bioware are very keen to keep their ear to the ground when it comes to connecting with their community, which is why they've made such efforts to answer questions through Reddit, Twitter, and running their live streams. So we can expect more of these, either for general Q&As or more than likely whenever they want to communicate changes with the game, especially if there are new features or changes on the back of community feedback. So if you're like me and enjoy watching them deep dive into one element of Anthem for up to an hour, we're in luck. Thanks for watching this episode of This Week in Anthem. As always, I want to hear your thoughts on anything Anthem, and you can find links to everything covered in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. You can subscribe to support the channel, and use the bell for notifications for future content as it goes live. And until next time, I've been Dantir, thanks for watching.